What's up, movie crew? Welcome to the latest collection video. Before I get started, if you are new to this channel, my name is Luke, this is Let's Watch a Movie, and if you're anything cinema and physical media related, you found the right place, so hit that subscribe button. Alright, so recently, Criterion, let me grab both of these, put out Martin Scorsese's After Hours. And Arrow Video put out Martin Scorsese's Hugo. I thought this would be a good time to finally do that Scorsese collection video. And be sure to hit the end of the vid wait till the end of the video because there is a giveaway. All right. This collection video will only be Scorsese's directorial features. While I do own some of the stuff he, that he has been a producer of, such as Uncut Gems and The Family, I want to stick solely to his directorial features. And I do want to give everyone the letdown now. I don't own any of his documentaries. Don't really know what else to say beyond that. So... Let's get started. Scorsese Shorts. This features Italian American, American Boy, The Big Shave, It's Not Just You, Murray, and What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing in a Place Like This? The oldest one being What's a Nice Girl Like You Doing in a Place Like This being in 1963, which is why I'm showing this one off first. Gotta say, you definitely see Scorsese trying to learn what all he wants to do as far as being a director goes. And at the time of me record, well, actually by the time this goes up, it'll be over, but... You might still be able to get this for a reasonable price on some other websites because by the time this video goes up, the Criterion sale will be done. Who's that knocking at my door? I got this at Dollar General a while back. I want to say either for $3.95 or $5.95. Good movie, definitely... You're still seeing him kind of come into his own with what he's doing. And I don't really think you see... Well, you still see Harvey Cattell in some of his movies, but... I think that's really the only person in here that you see in future movies of his. And the reason this one is a DVD is because at the time of me recording this video, there is no Blu-ray version. Boxcar Bertha. All right, so nice little tidbit about this movie. Executive producer, Roger Corman. That is correct. Roger Corman was the producer for Boxcar Bertha. And I believe they were going to do one other movie, but a disagreement on the direction of the movie ended up Leading Scorsese to doing something else. Um, this is the Twilight Time Blu-ray. If you don't know, Twilight Time does not have permanent releases. So this one's already out of print. The DVD is the only like in-print available version. And I've actually seen it at Dollar Tree recently. As far as the movie goes, it's not bad. But it definitely feels more like a Roger Corman feature than a Martin Scorsese movie. Now let's get into the nitty gritty here. This is the first movie where he collaborated with one Robert De Niro. And this movie is a classic. Mean Streets. This was definitely the movie where Scorsese has finally come into his own. It is just so good. 
And if I remember correctly, this was still before he was like really like catching on. So if I remember correctly, I think this was done on a fairly low budget too. Love this movie. Definitely one of the more underrated movies in his collection. Yes, I am calling Mean Streets underrated. You see the rest of the man's disguise or filmography, then you understand why. The next movie being one of the reasons why I say that. So this movie is one, probably my favorite movie from him. It is one of my favorite movies of all time. And pretty much everyone that has seen it will probably at least agree with me. If they don't agree with me, then chances are it is still ranked high amongst other movie people. Taxi Driver! This movie is iconic. It is one of the five out of five movies in my collection. You've got Robert De Niro playing an unhinged taxi driver. You've got one of the first appearances of Jodie Foster. You cannot go wrong with this movie. And I've got an anniversary edition, I believe, which has a bonus disc that's got a couple of cool extra bonus features. And I love this movie so much that I had to go and buy Columbia Classics Volume 2 so I could get the 4K. So there is the slipcover on the back. is a quote from the movie and then you've got pretty much the same box art as the blu-ray that i just showed off there are plenty of versions of this movie on blu-ray and 4k so you will see other versions of the box art this next one still a good movie the third movie where he worked with robert de niro and that is New York, New York. Um, this is not a bad movie, but given what we've normally gotten from Scorsese over the years, this one's definitely not what you would expect from him. For me personally, this was a one-time watch, but I know quite a few people that love the movie. All right, another classic Scorsese De Niro collaboration, Raging Bull. This movie is so freaking good. And for a movie that was put out in the 80s, this is also really good and it stands out with the fact that it's in black and white. So this is the Blu-ray version. And last year, I did an upgrade to the Criterion 4K. As far as why I still got both versions, I got to double check, but I do believe some of the special features on the Blu-ray are not on the Criterion. So I wanted to go on ahead and keep it just on the safe side. Next... You can definitely tell to any of my comic book people, if you've ever watched Joker, Joker definitely played a couple of homages to this movie. And that is The King of Comedy. This one's more of a dark comedy, psychological evaluation of Robert De Niro's character. And how he is towards Jerry Lewis's character. I was lucky enough to get this at Dollar Tree. Apparently, I am the only person that's ever seen it at Dollar Tree before. Go pick it up. It is a great movie. And also, I'm looking that apparently it was made by Fox. So, definitely find it before Disney starts taking stuff off shelves. And next... 
I know I just showed this one off at the beginning of the video, but after hours. So Criterion recently put this out, and this is the first time that I think this has been released on any form of physical media. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think this got a DVD release, which is weird given how iconic of a director Martin Scorsese is. At the time of me recording this video, I have not yet watched this. Uh, to anyone that doesn't want to pay the money for Criterion, I do believe it is one of the free with ads watches you can do on Vudu. After I record this video, I will go back behind myself, check, and see whether I'm right or wrong. The Color of Money. All right, I gotta be honest with everyone here. You probably already figured this out now given that I didn't review Top Gun Maverick last year and I'm not reviewing Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning this year. I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan. Nothing against the guy, just not a huge fan. But I don't know if it's because I'm a Scorsese fan if we're still see the fact that we still see Paul Newman doing his thing when he got older, rest in peace to Paul Newman. But this is probably one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies out of the ones I've, out of everything I've watched, this is definitely up there. Anyone wondering for me, it's this and Last Samurai and Tropic Thunder. All right, so this is one of the first ones where we get the religious stuff going on in Scorsese's movies. And one of the first times that we see a more watched version of The Crucifixion, and that is Last Temptation of Christ. Um... It's been a little bit since I've watched this. And I gotta be honest with everyone, I think I prefer Passion of the Christ to this one. But that does not mean this is a bad movie. So, again, definitely check it out if you get a chance. Alright, so this next one is a collaboration. We've got three... It's not three movies because it's not... They're not full-on films. All three of them together are about an hour and 40 minutes. And that is New York Stories. All right, so Martin Scorsese directed Life Lessons, which is the first one on here, which stars Nick Nolte and Rosanna Arquette. All right, this has since been re-released. The re-released version is definitely the better video quality, but I got this for a dollar, so I'm not going to complain. I've got to give credit where credit is due, though. While Scorsese did his thing with Life Lessons, Oedipus Rex, which is directed by Woody Allen, is definitely the best of the three on here. you got Martin Scorsese, you've got Francis Ford Coppola, and you've got Woody Allen. All right, so this next one is definitely one of my favorite movies directed by Scorsese and the fact that this came out a little bit after a lot of the like gangster movies that you got in the 80s and this one felt a lot different. Plus it was released in the 90s. Goodfellas. I managed to get this at FYE when my local FYE closed down for a very cheap price. And this thing has quite a bit of stuff on it. I highly recommend picking up the 4K if you get a chance. This is definitely one of the better looking 4Ks in my opinion. And it's got a ton of bonus features. I think there's a 4K steelbook out there. I forget whether it's 4K or Blu-ray. I went with this particular release just because I got it for a cheap price. All right, so now we are going into a film noir sort of movie, and that is Cape Fear. 
So this is actually a remake of a 50s movie, I believe. I'm going to be honest, I have not watched the original version. If anyone has, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the original. As far as this one goes, it's pretty good. Once again, you've got Robert De Niro in here. You've got Jessica Lange in here. I definitely like this movie, but I've got to say it's probably middle of the road for me when it goes to Scorsese. That being said, middle of the road for him is still better than some of your favorite director's best movies. Next up, The Age of Innocence. All right, I normally like movies like this. And it's got a stacked cast. Scorsese knows how to bring in the actors. However, this one's just not it for me. To those that like it, definitely comment down below. Praise the movie. Just, I'm not one of the people that can Next up, Casino. So, I still have my regular Blu-ray version, but not too long ago, I did upgrade to the 4K. And I've got to say, to anyone that's only watched the more recent stuff from Scorsese, if you are a fan of The Wolf of Wall Street, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Because it's got a lot of the same, like, ideologies and the temptations and all that stuff. Now, this one's not, like, a dark comedy like Wolf of Wall Street is. But I would definitely recommend checking this one out if you have not seen it yet. Alright, so the next one. It's weird to put this one, like, this one's got a weird spot for me when it goes to, like, my views on it. So, back in 2001 or 2002, two of Leonardo DiCaprio's movies came out at the same time. First one being Catch Me If You Can, co-starring Tom Hanks and directed by Steven Spielberg. The other one, co-starring Daniel Day-Lewis and Cameron Diaz, directed by Martin Scorsese, and that is Gangs of New York. Alright, so when these two movies first came out, I preferred Catch Me If You Can. At that time, I was watching a lot of stuff with Tom Hanks in it. I was a really big fan of Castaway, so when this one was the one that everyone seemed to talk about more, it kind of annoyed me. Now that I've gotten a little bit older and I've watched both movies again, Younger Me was wrong. This is definitely the better movie. Now, having rewatched both Gangs of New York and Catch Me If You Can over the last few months, by no means am I saying that Catch Me If You Can is a bad movie. It is a great movie. But I did not fully appreciate the greatness of this movie when it came out, probably because, like me now, Younger Me was not a fan of longer movies, and this one's almost three hours long. But I did get this one for a fairly cheap price. You should be able to find it online or in, I don't know if it's going to be in $5 bins now, but definitely worth checking out. Alright, so the next two are part of this three movie set that was given to me for Christmas one year. And that is... The Goodfellas, The Departed, and Aviator. Aviator, once again, I have mixed feelings on because if you've seen other videos and you know that one of my favorite directors is Christopher Nolan and he planned to do a Howard Hughes biopic and have Jim Carrey play the later years unhinged Howard Hughes. Well, Scorsese beat him to the punch and did a younger 
pre-unhinged Howard Hughes with DiCaprio in the leading role. Good movie. You definitely see the part where he starts to become unhinged, but that's not the focus on the movie. That's more on the whole aviator portion, not the behind the scenes stuff. And The Departed is definitely up there with Taxi Driver for one of my favorite Scorsese movies, as well as one of my favorite movies. The Departed and Taxi Driver. If I were to put all these on Letterboxd, both of those are going to have perfect five-star reviews. Only thing that really that I have a nitpick with on The Departed is that I wish he would have went with the Pink Floyd version of Comfortably Numb instead of the Roger Waters solo version. Sorry, y'all, but... Pink Floyd purist, alright? There's something about covers from them I just don't like. So, Goodfellas is available in 4K. I showed that off. I have heard rumors that both The Departed and The Aviator are currently looking at getting 4K transfers. But if you want just a simple Blu-ray triple feature set, this is, I believe, still available and not that expensive. So this might come as a shock to some people, but this is actually the first Scorsese movie that I ever saw in theaters. Shutter Island. I had to rewatch this movie because... There's some stuff I missed. Great movie. Love seeing him go into the psych thriller stuff. Like, this is even borderline almost a horror film. With the way he shot this movie. And no, I don't own the 4K yet. I Honestly, I don't remember why I didn't get the 4K. If I had to guess, it probably came out at the same time as a bunch of other stuff I was getting and I had to be in a pick and choose situation. Hugo. This one is definitely a standout because for someone that made Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, The Departed, Goodfellas. You got a kid's movie. And this is the movie he did right after Shutter Island. And I believe the next movie I'm showing is Wolf of Wall Street. So, yeah. Still, though, good movie. Fun watch. And to any cinephiles out there, you want your kid to be a fan of Scorsese, you have a way to get them started. And, like I showed at the beginning of the video, I did recently get the Aero video version. I did get the Blu-ray just because... I don't know why, but my local Barnes & Noble had the Blu-ray on sale, but not the 4K. And that was a nice little price difference. At the time of me recording this, I have not yet watched the Aero video version. I've seen some good stuff about it. So, hopefully, I will enjoy this. As far as the movie itself goes, good movie, but runs kind of long for a kid's movie. All right, so this next one, I am doing my sole exception with directorial features. I'm including this because he did direct the pilot episode. He was attached as an executive producer for all five seasons, but I'm only going to show off season one. And that is HBO's Boardwalk Empire. All right. So, the people behind the show were kind of 50-50 on whether or not the show was going to go to series. There was a lot of stuff going to HBO at the time. I would have to fact check myself, but this, I think this was also around the same time Game of Thrones went to series. So, you've got one show that's about to become like this huge phenomenon, and then you've got this one. 
Martin Scorsese having ties to some of the people involved said, what do I got to do to help you out? And they're like, uh, direct the pilot. So the pilot episode was directed by Scorsese and he was very hands-on with the first season. As far as the show itself goes, the first two or three seasons are good. Season four, the quality starts to drop. Season five, not the best ending. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. This one's a very difficult movie for me to rank in Scorsese's collection. On one end, I like it up there as much as I like Taxi Driver and The Departed. But I feel like I'm committing blasphemy if I say I like it more than something like Goodfellas, for example. And that is The Wolf of Wall Street. All right. If you've seen my movie reviews, everyone already knows one of my biggest complaints is when a movie overstays its welcome. At three hours long, this movie is a breeze for me. The first time I got to watch it, it had some controversy in my area, so it ended up getting pulled from theaters after a few weeks. So I didn't get to see it in theaters. When I bought it, I watched it, loved it, and watched it a second time. Yes, I did a double back-to-back -back on The Wolf of Wall Street the first day I watched it. This movie was also my introduction to Margot Robbie. And the accent that she does in this was kind of what I was hoping when they announced that she was playing Harley. Because that was what made me go, they need to have her play Harley Quinn. That being said, we're not going to get into all that stuff right now. Still like her as Harley, but as far as The Wolf of Wall Street goes, I almost want to say this would be in my top five of Scorsese films. And it is definitely one of my favorite movies of the 2010s. Alright, so this was the, I believe, the Target Blu-ray Steelbook. And when Paramount did the 4K upgrade... They did another steelbook, so I got this one as well. One, to upgrade my Blu-ray to 4K, but two, I also like this steelbook. And this one has more special features than the first release did. Alright, so we got another movie that involves Scorsese going the religious route. And... I'm sorry, but I did not like this movie. And I hate saying it because I know this was a project that Scorsese was working on for years. In fact, I could be wrong, but I think there's like a four or five year gap between Wolf of Wall Street and this. And even during that time frame, I think he only did one, maybe two documentaries. And that is silence. I'm sorry. I know that this was a huge passion project for him. I know this was a story that he really wanted to tell. I just don't like this movie. It was too slow paced. Some of the... One of the leads in here was not a believable character for me. I don't know what else to say. And we're going to be wrapping it up with The Irishman. Alright, so long story short, for those that don't know, Silence flopped in theaters to the point where Paramount backed out of backing The Irishman. And because this has flashback scenes and Scorsese didn't want to do different actors playing younger versions of some of the characters. He wanted to do like the deep fake stuff, kind of like what you got in Gemini Man with Will Smith. Netflix came in 
which at first concerned me being a physical media person. Netflix does not put a lot of their stuff on physical media. On top of that, not a lot of their stuff goes to theaters either. Good news was this got a brief theatrical run in my area. Unfortunately, this was also at a time when I was starting to have a lot of success with some of my endeavors with what I do as a writer. And for those that are unaware, this movie is three hours and 29 minutes. I have watched this twice and I have yet to watch it in one sitting. Both times I've watched it, I've had to give myself an intermission. It's a great movie. I've read the book it's based off of. But you definitely feel the runtime on this one. My recommendation is if you do want to watch this, it's on Netflix. So for those that are, you know, Netflix people, find a good resting spot for this. Because there are a couple of moments in the movie where you can pause it and go back to it. Uh, to any of my physical media people, I think I gave myself a break after an hour and a half and then watched the remaining almost two hours a little bit later on. And Criterion, thank you. Because when I found out Netflix was the ones doing this, I was concerned this wasn't going to get a physical release. And I'm going to have a pinned comment down below. This year, Scorsese will be dropping his latest movie, Killers on the Flower Moon, which is a co-production, I believe, between Paramount and Apple, uh, Apple Plus. So hopefully that one will also get a physical media release because I definitely love my physical media. So that is it for the collection. If you are here for the giveaway, it is time. All right. To enter this giveaway, I do want to give the quick rule now. Gotta live in the States. Apologies, but one, I've got stuff on here that is just DVD and none of the, those are region coded. But also shipping sucks when it goes to shipping stuff from America to another country. So I want to go ahead and give that quick rule now. To enter, name three Scorsese movies you are a fan of. And the three movies I will be giving away, Boxcar Bertha on DVD, Sorry, like I mentioned, the Blu-ray is out of print. New York, New York. Also on DVD. And Hugo on Blu-ray. Sorry, y'all, the time of me deciding I was going to do a Scorsese giveaway, I did not realize that there was going to be the Arrow video release, so... All you gotta do is name your three favorite Scorsese films in his filmography. And if you wanna mention his documentaries, you can. All you gotta do is be something either directed by him. Simple as that. And as always, if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. You like what you see, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below. One. Your three favorite Scorsese movies, so you can enter the giveaway. But also, do you have any special memories involving any of the Scorsese films? Me personally, Shutter Island being the first movie of his I got to see in theaters. But also, I remember that first time I saw The Departed. It was on TV one night, and they did an uncut version, so that was really cool. 
that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.